Where's Rick? Rick's away. Rick's in uh, one of the islands. I don't know. There's a long island in the mountains. I'm not sure. Uh, League 645 will call the meeting to order. Uh, first item in the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any amendments to it, John? Yes, um, with respect to um, agenda item number three, I move to um, postpone and reschedule a, a, the executive session uh, to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public official, employee, staff member, or individual on the Situate Housing Authority until September 4th, 2012 at 645. Uh, that's my first motion. Uh, you know, with that, we received a letter from Mary Ann Lewis. Uh, please be advised that there was a prior commitment that I am unable to attend the select committee this evening and respectfully request that the matter be continued to a mutually convenient date and time. So we'll uh, postpone that to the 4th, and Mary Ann's been notified as, as such. Uh, the 4th is so our next meeting? The 4th is our next meeting. All right, so we, we won't. On that or? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's Aye. continued to the fourth. And the other one is the cafeteria number seven. Yeah, I was going to say I'd move to, um, I guess, um, withdraw agenda item number seven, which is a discussion vote of water contract concerning situate blue refuge, uh, refuse bags, uh, and indefinitely postpone on it. Second. Second motion was made. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That was unanimous. Uh, it's now time for walk-in period. It's about 10, 10 minutes early, so if anyone's coming in for walk-in, if they're here now, we'd be love to talk to you. Nobody. If anyone comes in later on, we'll just put them in, even though, okay? Because we are running ahead. Uh, the applicant for the Water Resource Committee. How are you? Good. Would you mind just coming up and saying hello? Thank you for coming in, and if you just give us your, your name and a little background, that would be great. Sure. My name is Martha Cook. I've lived here about 25 years now, and I'm interested in protecting the water resources. I, I think one of the things I was surprised to learn when we first moved here was that um, we had the tap water at our house tested because we had a baby and um, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Over the years I've learned a lot more about ecology and the environment, um, about water in particular, and I'm just concerned about trying to learn more about it and help guide the town in the right direction. Um, my husband and I both have volunteered for different things over the years involving schools, scouts, a variety of other boards. Um, so I was interested in this one. Great. Any questions, comments? Hey, just a comment. I know Martha, uh, Dick, her husband, served on the advisory committee for, is it six years or three years? One of the two. I know he was chair for a year and did a great job. He did, they do a ton with the Eagle Scouts and with the, with the Scouts. I know their son was an Eagle Scout, um, and they're very active in the community. And um, I think you do a great job. I just thank you for stepping up to the plate, Martha. Look well, forward to it. Thank you. Well, you happen to be here. We, we've been asked to apply for a, a grant, uh, for, excuse me, for an award. And I, the, the award escapes me. I think it's a federal award because of the work we've done with, with uh, water quality and the return of Herring Brook and, and water conservation. So. We're certainly moving in the right direction, thanks yes. to people like yourself. So, yes. thank you. So, motion. Uh, oh, well, I guess we're going to wait till the end of the meeting. Looks pretty good, though. I think. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, item number six. Discussion vote outdoor entertainment permit military. Friends, I don't see them here yet. Um, so why well, don't we just hold off on that? Seven is being postponed. How about uh, someone getting L? Kim, thank you. Wow. Wow.
This is discussion vote award DPW contracts of vehicles. Good thing you didn't go home for dinner. I Help, thought, uh, I actually looking at your agenda, I thought that we were being on a little later, so I apologize for being around the corner. Okay, a couple of things are postponed, so we just. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right, good. Um, this is, uh, you have a revised sheet from me. Yep. Yep, okay. Uh, we are here to request that the Board of Selectmen award contracts for the purchase of uh, vehicles for the Department of Public Works and for the Police Department. Uh, these are capital purchases that were authorized at the April Town Meeting. And I'll explain why I'm here on behalf of the DPW and the police force in just a minute. Uh, we, the DPW is standardizing the vehicles that we purchase as much as possible so that uh, we can maintain parts inventories, do the maintenance ourselves, get the right manuals and that sort of thing. Uh, so we are this year purchasing the following vehicles or recommending that we purchase the following vehicles, uh, which would be uh, Chevrolet pickup trucks fitted for the various departments. Of course, the water department has different requirements for the um, the back of the truck than, than does the sewer department or the highway department. But we're able to purchase all of those Chevrolet trucks from the Plymouth County Commissioner's contract, a group bid done by the Plymouth County Commissioners. Uh, the dump truck uh, is from Mate Mass State contract. <coughs> the lawn mowing equipment from Toro is from another Mass contract. And the hot box is from the Greater Boston Police Council contract. Um, since both the police department and the DPW are uh, authorized to purchase a Ford Explorer this year, we, s we work together to solicit competitive bids for these two units. And as a result of buying the two units, we were able to uh, get a better price than from the state contract. And so that's why we're here tonight on behalf of the police department who did, did the uh, research on this. Uh, with the exception of the hot box, all the equipment has been, that's being purchased replaces obsolete equipment that will be taken off the road, so we're not adding to the fleet. We're simply replacing the older vehicles. Uh, all of these purchases went through the rigorous uh, uh, circumspection this winter by the Capital Planning Committee, the Advisory Committee, yourselves, and our town administrator to make sure that uh, we're buying just what we need these purchases are all funded from either available cash, uh, free cash, or retained earnings. Just to be clear on that, and they passed the town meeting, so this isn't free cash right now. This is this is what we allocated as a capital plan through free cash that got passed at the last town meeting. That's correct. So these are all approved, all p voted on by the town, and really this is the last stage of purchasing. Right, and we're coming to you because we need to award a contract to a specific vendor for a specific purpose, purchase. This is already been through town meeting, capital planning, advisory, you folks, me, and yet he's, you know, so these kind of things I'd be asking the board's authority that over certain 25,000 thresholds that this can just go through so we don't get locked into the board. What's the hot box? Yeah. What's yes. the hot box? The hot box is a... Um, a heated box into which one puts asphalt. And you go to the plant, pick up the asphalt, it keeps it warm so that uh, throughout the day as you're using it on potholes or repairing uh, sidewalk sections or other parts of the road, the, the asphalt stays at the correct temperature so when it's put down then it adheres. Gotcha. Well, Just speaking of that, asphalt, <clears throat> further explanation, it's, I think it's in place of putting soft patch down. Soft patch was just a is a temporary patch. This is a way of, if you've ever seen those infrared pieces of equipment that'll come down, they lay down, they'll heat up the street, and then they're able to excavate it. And it's just a better job when they're doing a patch. I think that's a fair assumption. Right. Can I just ask one other question? Sure. Uh, I was just looking down the list. I don't think we own a Dodge in the whole town. Why would you get, is that, yeah, is it a bargain deal? That's good question. Um, because the Chevrolet equipment is not um, let's see, I forget what. Kevin's I, I, just walked in. Maybe he can answer yeah, it all. There's a very specific reason why I we're buying the Dodge. Turbo in it for some reason. That's pull stuff so they can pull the trailer. Yeah. All right, good. I, it, I'm, I yeah. could be guessing. There was something to do with the trailer. I talked right. to one of the mechanics about it. Yeah. Is it, good? Is it Ram Tough? 
Is it Ram Tough? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's they got a reason for it because we were trying to skip all the same vehicle. I just didn't. Yeah. Yeah, he might have been towing or something, showing a bigger engine. I, I don't okay. know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, speak, oh, just okay. before, speaking of hot top and, and paving, Beaver Dam Road and First Parish. We got a couple of questions on that recently. Yes, um, I think actually we are finished this week with what's called raising the structures or or, or adjusting all of the um, out of kilter. Uh, manhole covers and sewer covers and that sort of thing and then next week we begin paving we're actually very early on the <coughs> paving schedule this year we made a strategic decision early to line up all of the vendors even though the chapter 90 money wasn't approved we got in the queue early with the grinder and then the paver so that we could be first out of the box so uh, unlike previous years you know we're we're kind of pushing November before we're paving. This year we're going to have the paving done. We're targeting to have it done before school starts. So next week, you think? I believe so. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. We're in the queue. A motion. Sure. We move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the following contracts for the vehicles and equipment. The purchase of two Chevrolet pickup trucks for highway and grounds from Liberty Chevrolet of Wakefield, Massachusetts for a total price of $60,070. So do it all individually or all together, Trish? Yeah, we have separate. Good. Second. Motion been made to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Oh, aye. I'm sorry. Looking at my next motion here. Sorry. Uh, move the Board of Slackman vote to award the following contract um, of vehicles and equipment for the purchase of a Chevrolet pickup truck for the sewer enterprise from Liberty Chevrolet of Wakefield, Mass., for a total price of $30,035. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Four nothing. Move the Board of Selectmen uh, um, to purchase a Chevrolet utility bo uh, body pickup truck for the water enterprise from Liberty Chevrolet of Wakefield, Massachusetts for a total price of $30,260. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. For nothing. Board, uh, move the Board of Selectmen um, to purchase a one-ton Dodge dump truck from Central Dodge of Norwood, Mass. for a total price of $53,854. Second. Right. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen uh, purchase um, a Toro Grandmaster gang mower uh, from Turf Products of Enfield, Connecticut. I think, yeah, CDN, Connecticut, uh, for a total price of $89,000. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen uh, to purchase a trailer mount three cubic yard hot box from Minuteman Trucks of Walpole, Mass. for a total price of $39,500. Second. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Finally, I move the Board of Selectmen to vote. Uh, the purchase of two Ford Explorers from Stoneham Motor Company of Stoneham, Mass., for a total price of $51,980. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Oh, thanks. Laura's on her way in to discuss Bylaw? flood grants, higher re reimbursement amounts. There was nothing else really quick that we could deal with, I don't think. Unless you wanted to make the appointment to the Water Resource Committee. Sure. Go ahead. That's no, number, number thir 13. Move Martha Cook as the next um, committee member to the Water Resource Committee. Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded for Martha Cook. Further discussion from the floor, from the board? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, now I'm sure there's nothing. I just, well, let me take up some other business now myself. Under the other business, while we're waiting for our agenda item, if your board doesn't mind, I'll just bring them up now. I attended. Uh, uh, opiate addiction meeting last night at Pier 44 attended by probably close to 100 people, 80 to 100 people 
Florence Cho uh, more or less ran it. Uh, a panel of experts were brought in talking about opiate abuse and, and, and not only with, with, with uh, uh, young people but also with old people who, who it's uh, becoming a, a, a larger and larger problem and uh, it was just well attended. It was a great meeting and, and uh, if they have it again, I think it would behoove anyone to go there. So, yeah, the uh, group's doing a great job. Yeah. Marianne, I mean, Emery, and that group, are, they've had a couple of, you've been to two or three. A couple of them, and this, yeah, and, and they did a great job. It's, it's, you know, if without editorializing on it, if you're a parent in town, uh, you should try to make every effort to go to one of these meetings because it's, it's eye-opening, to say the least. Having said that, Laura, I know that happy note. Oh, uh, thank you. If you'd come in and thank, tell us about the reimbursement. The, um, you know, the town has this elevation grant program, which yep. I know, you know, we've, you know I, I know I've talked about with you all before. And since I got involved with it, there have been, there's, there's one main uh, level of reimbursement that's been used, and that was 40000 to reimburse people for a portion of the cost of elevations. What's happened over the years is that cost has really gone up with the cost of fuel getting so expensive and materials and everything else. And it's now costing people about, oh, I'd say $100,000 is common to elevate a house, and it's often quite a bit more than that. So I met with the Elevation Grants Committee, which has Dave Ball, who's the head of that Coastal Council that includes all the beach associations and Rosemary Doby and also um, Doris Crary. And we talked about whether it would be a good idea to ask for the maximum that we can really ask for from FEMA. And that would reimburse people for 75% instead of just, you know, 40 or 50,000. And they thought that was a good idea. And the next step was to ask you all to, you know, to bless that or to, to vote it so that we can have that be the official amount that we're asking for. Tony. So, if I understand this correctly, the, the town arbitrarily picked forty or fifty thousand dollars to ask for reimbursement in the past when we could have maybe asked for more? Well, what happened in the past was there was a defined pot of money, and if we kept the amount that each homeowner was getting, you know, set at a certain amount, then we could spread it among more people. I see. Um, but that's changed. It's, it's not done that way anymore. Uh, there's a bigger bucket of money to, to draw from. Yeah. And this is obviously all federal money. None of this is town money. Right. So this is all just getting, getting reimbursed from FEMA for repair work that people are doing to their houses in the floodplain. Right. John. Is there any downside? This is this is great. I'm reading it over, and I, this is a home run to those people that you know are that haven't done it yet. Is it? Is there a downside to it? Why wouldn't you? This is this is great. Well, I don't think there's really a downside. Um. Okay. All right. Further discussion from the floor. Motion. The motion, please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to support an increase to 75% from FEMA elevation grant reimbursement per the recommendations of the Flood Grant Committee? Second. Motion has uh, been made and it's been seconded. Just one other question. Yep. This document that's with us, Laura, this yep. is just our guidelines that we give people that come in here and want to apply for the grant? That's right. And we're just changing this one line on it from forty dollars to $50,000 to 75%. That's right. Okay. No, thank you. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Laura, thank you for bringing that to us. That's, a, as Sean said, a win-win it looks like. So. Hope so. Hopefully. All right. Stay right where you are. I think, Laura, we'll talk about uh, zoning bylaw, village business overlay district. Agenda item number 10. I think Bill Limbacher is coming down to um, join me for that, but 
I'm not sure if he's going to get here before you you end because I think he was. We thought the meeting was going to be a little bit longer, so I don't know if would you, uh, you want me to try to get him here would, earlier. Would you, or well, go for eleven. Yep, could go for all right. Eleven. Do eleven first. The board's agreement. All right. Do eleven first. Is that all right? Okay. Um, this is another item that I think you're basically familiar with. It's the settlement agreement where the town was going after the funds from the performance bond to get Walnut Tree Hill completed. And after a lot of work by um, a lot of different people, we finally have the document. The amount that the contractor is getting paid is about $820,000. And that's going to cover fixing the problems in Garrison Drive, fixing some problems with Greenbrier Way. Um, there's a water easement that has some bad erosion problems in it that's kind of a long stretch of, of land, and that will get fixed also. And then there's some little odds and ends of, of construction work that need to be fixed throughout the whole subdivision. So this is going to help um, as far as getting that subdivision closer to getting the streets accepted. It's, I don't think it's all that has to be done, but it's one step in that direction. And um, I think you have a letter from town council we do. about this. It's been a long time coming. As, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But Agreed. It, it appears to be here from the board. Sure. Uh, just so that everybody understands, the bond that was put forward was a bond that the contractor, the developer who actually built this subdivision, had to put up in order to complete the project. And that's what the bond's for, correct? Right. All right. So in other words, what the town did was, due to their failure to complete a lot of the work for the build-out, if you will, of the roadways, the town ended up, on behalf of the uh, homeowners, to go out and go after the bond to seek reimbursement in order to complete much of the items that we're talking about here tonight. It's not in full completion though, right? That's what you're indicating. Right. So just so people understand, this is not town money. It's money that's actually we're getting from a bond that the developer put up that ended up leaving. The, the developer, I think, was Modern Continental, I think, who ended up going bankrupt or, or moving on. But the long and short of it is, is that this is items that people have been trying to get completed. The performance bond was put up. The town now has stepped in to make sure that most of those items are or a lot of the items are getting completed to help those people in those neighborhoods so that ultimately down the road those streets can be accepted as public ways. They're not right now, but um, if the people on those streets decide to do so, then in the future that's a consideration the board will take in, right? Right. Thanks. Okay. Just Tony? Just, yeah. Um, there's been a ton of meetings on this. I've been in several of them, and obviously you've done a ton of work on this project. My, my question is, are the citizens of that area who are very knowledgeable on the needs and all this sort of stuff, are they on board with the work that's going to be done? Or is there still a discrepancy in terms of what what the bond is actually going to pay for repairs and what additional stuff has to be done for repairs? I think we've, we've worked out as much as we possibly could have. There are one or two people that probably are not going to be completely satisfied. There's one person who has some damage in her driveway. And the problem with, with this money is it really wasn't intended to cover the driveway. It was really just intended to cover the road. So you know, there are going to be a few situations like that. There was someone else who was very concerned that after drainage was put in that their landscaping might be affected and so on and I did check with town I actually even talked to him about it today to make sure that there's enough language in there that says that they have to restore everything to its you know pre-construction condition and there is so at least in his opinion there is so um, so that should help with that um, yeah, so I think but that's basically ticket, it. The big ticket items, all of them, particularly the street at the two entrances, are included. Back in the woodway there where that uh, erosion occurred, that's been taken care of. Were there yeah, any that's, other that's, big, under, that's uh, under this, to be taken care of. And were, were there any other sticking issues that, you know, major ones that aren't being, de I mean, you said some of them aren't being de dealt with. Are they more the, the, the things you just discussed, or are there any other bigger issues that haven't been addressed in this? Well, the only reason I said that, you know, I think this isn't going to go all the way towards the street acceptance is that 
I think the town has some pretty high standards about the road condition you know, throughout the whole subdivision, and there may be some work on those roads that needs to be done um, just because of the normal wear and tear, not because the developer didn't do their job. I mean, what we're doing is getting money because the developer really either left things incomplete or things failed, you know, roads failed that shouldn't have after such a short time. So we're getting, you know, additional drainage put in and um, getting those things addressed. Right. And when do you think the work will be completed? Oh, um, I think they hope to have it done by the, you know, by the end of the fall. Um, so as soon as we sign this, the insurance company will, will fund it. None of it is coming from the town's money. It's all coming from the insurance bond, as John mentioned. And they're paying the contractor to do the $800,000 of the work on the roadways. Right. They have hired a contractor. It's um, someone named Bosworth out of Braintree. And he's going to be paid through uh, travelers. Um, and it, it's not going to go directly through the town. But the town is going to sign off before he gets paid. And it's definitely going to start this fall. Yes. Right. Good job. You put a ton of work into it, so I'm glad we're moving forward to its completion. Yeah. Just, Thank just you. to take what Tony's concern is, just a step further. The only thing that jumped out with me, Laura, was the easement. And <clears throat> is that particular person, if there's anyone involved, on board with that? I mean, I don't see why anyone would have a problem fixing the road. And I understand the driveway that's getting on a private property, but uh, you, you don't suppose that will be a problem? We haven't heard anything right. about that, right, and it's good. it's way back behind good. people's property. Good. That yeah, so All I right. think it's going to be right. Good. That that was it. Yeah, the sooner the better. Motion. Uh, uh, sorry, John, no, just sorry. Uh, just going forward, and I realize, um, and this is not directed directly at the uh, planning board, but obviously, this was passed at some point in the past, probably in the uh, late '90s or something, or in the early 2000s. This project. Um, and, and supervision and making sure and maintaining that they were putting what they're putting, should have been putting down. Do we have any plan as a town going forward for some form of like, um, I don't want to say enforcement, but uh, inspection to ensure that future developments such as this actually get made the way that they were represented before town boards, in this case the planning board and, and conservation and other boards? I w would have to say I think we do. We're using consulting engineers now to do a lot of the inspections because the town staff doesn't always have the time to go out there. So the same engineer that reviewed the plans for us, either he or somebody in his company is coming out and actually doing the inspections. So I, I think we're we're a lot more on top of that. I'm than only we asking used to that be. because obviously I'm, I'm sure if I were sitting at, in, at home watching this or the Newswinder report, the question I have is how do we prevent this from happening going forward? Because we have to spend time, your time, other people's time, to fix something that frankly we never should have had to have done in the first place, but for what had happened. And frankly, I'm glad we did because it was um, necessary. But I just think people and that we, including yourself, we need to make sure that that prevents uh, things like this are prevented. And I'm glad to hear that. You know, that's, that's the push to, to try to resolve going forward, having uh, consultants. Thanks. Okay. Further discussion? Motion. Motion, please. All right, move the Board of Selectmen uh, vote to approve uh, the sum of $425,000 from the state. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Eight. Uh, actually, it says it's unknown at this time, but it's I. It's unknown. Um, it's eight. Yeah, there's an update here. I got it. Want me to do it, John? Yeah. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve and execute the okay. tri-party completion and settlement agreement for the performance and completion of outstanding work in the so-called Walnut Tree subdivision in accordance with the terms and conditions contained therein. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion from the floor, from the Board. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Mr. Limbach is here. Bill, why don't you come up? We're waiting for you. And again, Lauren, good job on that. That was, the town really hadn't gone through that process before in terms of actually playing this intermediary between the insurance company and a subdivision of a, like John said, a bankrupt developer. So it was all new territory and it took a lot longer than I think anyone wanted, but I'm glad we got it, you know, completed finally. Thank God it's not an emotional issue. <laughs> Going back to agenda item number 10, a vote 
uh, on a zoning bylaw village business overlay district. Who, Bill or Laura, whatever? <laughs> My turn, I guess. Your yeah, turn. Hey, sorry, I missed the discussion on the on the settlement. Uh, on it, what we've done is, is, as you well know, we, we created the, vis the uh, village business overlay district, and we've come back up. We went through the public, the public hearing processes. It was voted by town town meeting. We then went through a bylaw review. It was revoted again by town meeting. What we found was is that uh, there's a sentence that was it's in the original. Uh, bylaw it says where dimensional requirements are not specified construction must meet the requirements of the underlying zoning district what we found is the fact that it, it that limits us to to making the bylaw virtually unusable because the, the the underlying zoning doesn't change then in effect we're unable to come back up and increase the density and the benefits of creating the residents and the the, the retail so what we've done is we worked with neil we came back up and worked with the board and came back out and what we've done is we've modified uh, this sentence uh, and I think you've got the language it says uh, the old man takes his glasses off to read frontage requirements in the underlying zoning districts may be reduced by a vote of the planning board as long as the existing frontage is determined to be adequate to provide access for the vehicular traffic expected to be generated by the site it will require review by a traffic engineer or similar qualified professional prior to making this determination and then it says, in all other cases, dimensional requirements not specified will meet the requirements of the underlying zoning. So what this does, this gives the planning board the opportunity to look at the site, specifically <coughs> at the site, alter the frontage to come back up as, and make sure that it's safe vehicle tr for vehicle traffic, and then come back up and encourage it. And I think that's something that we, I think we really need to do is to come back up and create spaces for small businesses within the town. So that's, that's the reason for the change, and that's the language of the change. Okay. Fair assessment? Yeah. Thank you. What you're asking us to do <coughs> is to refer this proposal that you're presenting, refer it back to you to yeah, present to, to a special time meeting. Yes. Discussion from the board. Just gives you more flexibility to. More flexibility. And, it, and in that flexibility, I think it gives us the opportunity to really tailor that the opportunity that that site presents, okay, to both the applicant as, and particularly to the town in terms of the ultimate use. Good. I, th I like that. Okay. Great. Yeah. Further discussion from the floor? From we'll, the board? So we'll just discuss this again when you actually bring it before us on the warrant. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's in addition to a, a change to a bylaw, which is, you know, it's a pretty standard process for us. Right. Right. you want a motion? Please, from somebody. John. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to refer a proposed uh, a zoning bylaw change article mixed use building slash village bus business overlay district to the planning board for their review and recommendation and further that space be reserved on the special town meeting warrant for this article second motion has been made and seconded further discussion being none all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed it's unanimous thank you. thank you thank you thank you uh, we will now go back to Agenda item number six, the uh, outdoor entertainment per, uh, permit for Military Friends Foundation. Thank you for coming tonight, again. <coughs> How are you? Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you very much for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're proud to have, we're happy to have you. Uh, you're looking for an entertainment license. That is correct. Uh, how did uh, Piggity Beach parking lot work out? All right. I we're, we're hoping the tides will work in our favor for the timing of the event, and um, we have uh, hopefully some wonderful activities for families and run participants that will take mm -hmm. place. There, we're we, still seeking some have logistics. Have you checked the tides? Um, I believe that we're looking good right now. I've been asking some of your local situate residents to give us more advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the tides can be a problem down there. I would suggest, depending upon when high tide is, if high tide is at the same time that you're planning to have runners and participants there, you want to want to make sure you're far away from the beach, shall we say, as far away as you can be. Okay. Because it's pretty, I mean, it's only a couple weeks away. Doesn't the tide move an hour a day about? 
You could just look at a tide chart. Yeah, yeah I don't have then a tide chart. Then if it's a full, it's only if it's a full moon, right? No, so it's really Beach Beach is, is, does it? Yeah, it was all filled right. up today, I think. All right. Well, okay. Yesterday, I remember. So it's raining today. <laughs> yeah. But you can just look yeah. ahead. I'm That's, not sure what time I drove by. I think it's just really the location that you put the stuff, but it's pretty easy to figure out. We're hoping to have tables for families to be able to eat as well as food um, and possibly a tent, Look, depending on weather. Check on the tide. That's the only thing that jumps out at me anyway. So. Okay, very good. And it's set for September 8th? It is. We would anticipate that the earliest runners would start um, approaching Peggotty Beach probably at 11 a.m. And so we were looking to, um, you know, we had discussed having vendors, um, or excuse me, um, some of the um, setup done either the evening before, once the beach visitors were cleared, and posting a guard there, and then earlier in the morning. But then all of it would be immediately cleared. Um, How um, long is the run? Uh, the run it? itself is a 5K. Okay. And you have spotters, uh, uh, people, uh, signs directing people on the route? We have worked very closely with uh, the police department and Sergeant Gilmartin to make sure that everything, um, for safety purposes yep. as well as for efficiency, to make sure the roads can um, reopen fully as efficiently as possible. And how many runners do you anticipate? Do you? Um, I believe that the permit we put in was for 400. I'm trying to recall that off the top of my yep. head. It may have been for 450. Yep. Uh, we're very excited to have. Tonight, I'd have to check, but at least last week, uh, just over 250 people registered. Wow, great, great. So it's been wonderful support from the great, community. And great. there are more than uh, 100 individual families who've lost service members coming out to situate. Yep. Um, and many of them have multiple people within that family. If they're not registered for the run, who will be along the side yep, of the road? Great, great. great. Um, discussion from the board? Just one quick question. You said you're going to set up the night before and post a guard. That was what was recommended. Um, one of the, I think, in the letter, in one of the attachments, and I wanted to bring you in sort of a larger version, which is closer to the size of um, what Run for the Fallens do. This is a, an example of one of 185 tribute markers that families of the Fallen have designed. And uh, these markers would be on a coroplast type material, similar to uh, political signs, um, just the opposite direction. Um, and on very streamlined H frame metal posts that would go in and out um, and hopefully designed not to damage um, any landscaping. And so we had discussed um, with the police department about setting those up the night before because of the time that it takes, mm -hmm. um, both at the start and the end of the run and ensuring that they're protected with um, a military guard or some other volunteer that we have that right. will just be there to watch over them. A motion? Please. Move the board selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Massachusetts Run for the Fallen on Saturday, September 8, 2012 at Lawson Park for opening ceremonies for a DJ playing patriotic music from 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. The media butters must be notified in advance of this event by the applicant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, and bef before we vote. What streets will be impacted? What streets? We will find that out right now. Uh, do you have the route? I do, and I can try to pull it from memory, but I have it in my binder. Um, I believe we'll start at the Common. Yep. Um, go down First Parish Road. Yeah. Take a right onto Stockbridge. Yep. Okay. A left onto Greenfield. Greenfield. Okay. One. Yep. And then, uh, is there a ridge? A left onto Ridge onto Bay Kent ridge. Bay. No, Ridge, ridge Hill. Ridge Hill. Hill. Yeah. Excuse me. A left onto Ridge oh, yeah. Hill, on. Then a left onto Kent, yep. a right onto Edward Foster, and then straight up, which I think turns into Beach Street. Or? Beach. 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 Um, okay, so straight up the hill and then down around. Oh, you're going to go up the hill and down the hill. Right, so I think Edward Foster, there's a small road in between that has a different name before it hits a right onto Peggotty Beach Road going down they towards must go to the, the beach. Left. Well, they're oh. going to go up Edward Foster and they're going to go straight up. 
I think it does bear left slightly and then hook on to. Yeah, up and around, down the wrong way, down the one way. Probably. Down the right, wrong, okay. Yes. And you have spotters there or someone there to direct the runners. That's correct. Ann? Perfect. I was just concerned about um, we had a road race in our situate and none of the businesses were notified that this was going to happen. And so it's, it's my mantra about communication. So it's nice to know that this group will have absolutely no impact other than on the post office. It'll have no impact other than the post office. So post office and the gas station. And the gas station. Thank you. As far as business is concerned. And only one, the street won't be closed. It'll just right. be one lane That's closed, correct. So, and the police will be directing traffic on the other. And we have a team of volunteers coming out per our permitting application this weekend that will individually notify all of the residents and businesses along the way, as well as invite them um, to an event on the 28th here next to Town Hall, uh, where we'll be donating flags to anyone in your community who wants to come out and either hold them or decorate their front lawn if they're along the route, and hopefully educate them a little bit about uh, the event itself. And that's on the 28th? Yes, that's at on Town the 28th Hall. from 4.30 to 7 p.m. And there'll be complimentary pizza and um, <coughs> Drinks. That's August 28th. That is August 28th. August 28th. Okay, great. So where, where are you setting that up? Because I don't think we, we knew about that. Is that... Um, I believe it's actually next to the, I said behind Town Hall, but I think it will be somewhere in between outside by the police station um, and behind Town Hall in an area that allows for parking and safe access. Um, I know we've been working on the details with the police department, so I don't know the specific placement of the tables but we can definitely let you know yeah let, let the and we'd love for residents to come out and be part of that we're excited about that I just wanted to say one thing you know what it's a great race I really hope you get 400 plus and you know what if it means that people have to stop and wait two or three minutes for cars to go by whether it's getting to a post office or a gas station it's the least we can do and you know what I, I really wish you guys well in the, uh, the race and, uh, so, uh, it's a great cause so. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion on this in a second. Before we go on, I know this was your first run at this, and it's, it's, it's mind-boggling how much work has to go into it, etc. cetera, uh, from not only the town's point of view, but also yours. I think, you know, next year, coming back, you'll probably be that much more ahead of the curve, shall we say. We hope so. Yeah, you know, you'll have a lot of it. Uh, you've learned a lot from this year, and uh, it'll be much easier for you. You know, it's, you know, you'll know exactly. You won't, you won't be changing it as you go along. To, you know, so, and if it works this year, it's pretty much rubber stamp it for next year. It, you know, so it's good. Uh, motion. We already did it. Just got to vote on it, and then yep. we're going to do the second. Oh, do we have a vote on it? We have a vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Another motion. Another one. Move that the board of selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Massachusetts Run for the following on Saturday, September 8, 2012 at the Peggotty Beach parking lot for a band playing music from 11.45 to 1.15 p.m. 11, excuse me, 11.45 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. Immediate abutters must be notified in advance of this event by the applicant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, discussion I was gonna suggest before you leave even, if somebody can Google, find town hall, find the high tide on September 8th, it might be beneficial to you. Um, a discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck with it. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I had one other quick question, if possible. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks to the generosity of our state legislators and the Massachusetts uh, Military Division, they are considering a flyover to recognize the fallen service members um, that would take place uh, over the beach area at the conclusion of the run. Uh, we will not receive official notice whether that will happen possibly up until a few days before the event. If that were to happen, is there any paperwork that we can anticipate or permitting that we would need to present you or the town with so no. that families and turn that over to the town administrator i don't think so i don't think we have anything to do with that no, they, so. they, they have every right to fly over at the government yeah. i just wanted to double check with what you, you to make want sure to do that we weren't missing anything email the town so we can get it on the town's website sure and i think the press you know people will enjoy the days if they can get it in the paper 
If they wanted to land, that might be a problem. But <laughs> just for future, they want to fly over. Something there. to consider in the future, real, realizing this is your first go at it, if you will. But if you're thinking of doing it again next year, you might think about trying to uh, do it in conjunction, possibly, uh, but with um, um, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, you know, even if the 4th of July it might be too hot, but at least, you know, It'll be more people, not more people, but you know, it, it'll turn to a bigger event, I think, given if you package it. Yeah, thank you. Just, just to, to promote it better for you. You'd like that? Yeah, just about. We have a motion. We, we did it. We, we did it. We already, it. we already voted it. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. We, do we vote? We already voted. Yeah. Uh, earlier, we mentioned that we'd go back to walk-in. If anyone came in after looking for a seven o'clock walk-in, is, is there anyone here for walk-in? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, 12. 12. Discussion vote short term, short term borrowing for the fiscal year 13 capital project. Trisha. Uh, you have a memo on the packet for me indicating that um, several of our FY13 capital projects that were approved at the April Town meeting are ready to be purchased. And so we need cash. So this is something Jane, our former treasure collector, typically came in to do with you. I learned quite a lot about it in the last two weeks. Uh, we did uh, submit the outstanding information to Bond Council to get the green light letter, which we need to have in place before we do any borrowing. There was uh, quite a bit of information um, that needed to be submitted that Jane had worked on and I, I picked up the, the last tail end. So this um, reflects a six months cash flow for mostly school bus and the school technology. I would say that's almost 80% uh, of it and a, a slight contingency. So um, we filed this vote of the board with DOR and then we replenish it. Uh, we're anticipating hopefully still being able to float the bond in November. So we're just borrowing it from ourselves until we get the funding. Yep. Big. Motion? Please. Move the board selectmen vote to approve the sum of $425,000 from the stabilization fund to be used for fiscal year 13 capital projects as permitted by the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, bu 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 bu. I think I think we've done it all. Except 14. other business. Except other business. Other business. Who wants to start? I'll start. Uh, start. Just to let everybody know, um, Labor Day Parade down in Sand Hills is going to be held on Sunday, uh, September second. It's uh, an event that's been going on for almost 80 years. Actually, it's been long, 80 plus years. It's a great event. It's a very um, folksy parade. <coughs> it's, uh, people put floats in, kids um, march in, put their bicycles. But it's a it's a really fun event, and it really makes our town unique in that um, we have this type of a parade. So I highly uh, encourage people if you haven't been, go to it. it starts around 12 o'clock down in San Diego for September 2nd. The other one I wanted to say was that I noticed that. Um, acknowledge uh, Lieutenant Pro Prosecutor John Rooney, who apparently has announced his retirement uh, or his intention to retire after 11 years um, with the uh, Boston Police Department, but 28 years with Situa Police Department. On a personal level, I've dealt with uh, Lieutenant Rooney uh, prior to becoming a board of selectmen. I have to say he is a phenomenal uh, police prosecutor and represents the town very well. And um, I've seen him well, even when I've been on the board, although not you know, I've been in the courtroom, and I've seen how he's handled things. and. A complete 100% professional, and he does um, an excellent job representing the town's interests and doing the right thing. And I, I just wanted to say congratulations to him because I do notice what he does, and um, I, this town is, has been well served by him. We'll miss him. So uh, the board shares your us. shares your thoughts on that. I know. That's it. That's it. Uh, I was just going to say one thing. I believe it might be Zach's last night. I was thinking that. Is that Zach, true? I thought you're gone. I no, was like, oh, man, Zach. I'm glad you brought that up, Sean. Uh, and huh? Just, just, just thank him and, and wish him well. Zach's on his way to Harvard. Good for you. Congratulations. Yep. That's right. Stop yep. in every now and then. <laughs> that was all, Joe. That was it. Tony. Yeah. Um, the only thing I wanted to 
uh, mention is that uh, we've been getting some emails lately regarding the beaches and how the light uh, the lifeguarding is stopping and I know it's posted on the website but certain beaches probably don't have guarding anymore and in fact they're probably all done by the end of this week maybe Labor Day at the latest so before you go to the beach um, please check the website and make sure that um, that it's guarded if you're expecting to be guarded I think is mine at the last one I or believe uh, Humra? Hey. Peggy's the last one. Peggy's the last one. I can go get the notice if you want. Uh, What's well, on the website? I mean, pe people can find it. If, um, but just again, beware. Thank. They they did a great job again this year, and um, unfortunately, they go back to college, and now we, uh, um, you know, they're not they're not guarded for the last couple of weeks of August. Some of them. Thank you. And <clears throat> under other business, the Course Foundation is is sponsoring their their. Uh, Loser Training Wheels program this week at the Gates School where uh, special needs kids come in who with different degrees of ability as far as riding bikes. Some have never been able to ride a bike. And through a week of, of sessions uh, with volunteers and with the people who run this program, it, it's miraculous at the end of the week to see the the change in, in, in these kids' uh, ability to ride bikes, and more important, the change in their confidence in themselves. They come in on a Monday and they, they, they uh, are nervous, as, as we might imagine, uh, to get on, even get on a bike. And by Friday, they're, 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 they're no training wheels, they're on their own. It's just, it's just a, another one of those things that if you're in the vicinity of the Gate School, any day this week from 8.30 till about 2, drop by and it'll be a great experience for you. Uh, <clears throat> lastly, the board has sent a letter to, the, uh, to all the residents of Hummer Rock. I believe every resident, not only those residents that signed the petition uh, a week or two ago to us, but to all residents of Hummer Rock, uh, outlining the town's position on the bonfires and as well as the town's position on the events of July 3rd. That letter is uh, on the website. Uh, we invite anyone to read it. And our quest for openness, we wanted to make sure that everybody uh, is aware of it. So it's on the website. Read it. It's a good letter. Okay. Just so one thing, Joe, that you mentioned about cords. Um, uh, I just want to say that you're absolutely right. It's it, this is something that is unique. I think it's like one or second in the state that has this program. And you, you think that we'd have this type of program with p uh, kids with disabilities to be able to have a, an ability to go out and try to figure out a ride. And, and of course, it's been. I think it's the second year or third year we're doing it here in our town. I mean, that that just uh, is amazing. And. Um, you're absolutely right about the confidence it brings. Um, I, I know that firsthand from my nephew who went through a program in New York State, and I have to tell you, you know, it does bring everything you've said. Yep. So uh, people should understand that. And I, it's another good reason that everybody should be patting themselves on the back because you live in such a great town. So, anyway. Yeah, great. Uh, I don't have anything else, Tony. Just one last thing. I see <coughs> this flyer here. Um, on August 31st, the Situate DPW is having the Situate DPW Day on the front lawn of Town Hall. Um, it looks like they're going to have a bunch of vehicles here, the, the large equipment that uh, the town uses out there for kids to kind of climb on and, and, uh, and get used and in, in play with and what have you. I don't think they'll be able to drive it, but um, there'll be a loader, a street sweeper, a backhoe, a dump truck, a bucket truck, and all yeah, sorts of uh, equipment for uh, that. around for them to come and, uh, and experience. So again, August 31st from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. at Town Hall Front Lawn. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, I think we've covered, we've jumped around a little bit, but I think we've covered every item. Uh, number 15 is the executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation of the legal matter of the Zoning Board of Appeals versus Herringbrook Meadow LLC and Mass Housing Appeals Committee. So we'll be going to executive session for that and we'll need a motion. So move. Uh, move. Are we returning back into regular session and that are just adjourned from that? Fair enough. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thanks, Zach. <laughs>